Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and One Race Wonders episode 34. If this is your first time watching One Race Wonders, where the hell have you been? This is a series where we look at Formula One drivers who made one single appearance in a Formula One race. They have to start one race and then never be seen again. Check out the playlist after this video so you can catch up. Today's One Race Wonder may be one of the most tragic we have looked at. It is, of course, Frenchman Jose Dollum. So let's see what happened during the eventful, albeit short, motorsport career and, of course, his sole appearance in Formula One. Make sure you subscribe and let's begin. Jose Dollum, or Luis Jose Lucien Dollum, to give you his full name, was born in Paris and is the older half-brother and cousin of Didier Peroni. The two racers shared a father and their mothers were sisters. I bet Christmas was awkward. Jose Dollum began racing in his mid-twenties, which is pretty late, and was just a few years before his younger half-brother from another mother. In 1971, he took part in a European Formula 2 race for the Sifford team and a few appearances in the British Formula 3 without much success. He raced again in European Formula 2, this time for the Shell Arnold team, and did score points at one of 15 races, good enough for 27th in the championship. And this was then the biggest problem with Jose Dollum's career. In 1973, he only took part in three races, the 1,000 kilometers of Monza in a Lola T292, a single Formula 2 race for Surtees, and the 24 hours of Le Mans, where Dollum raced a Ferrari for Automobiles Charles Pozzi alongside Alain Sepagi. The pair finished ninth overall, but second in class, behind their teammates for a Charles Pozzi Ferrari 1-2, probably the best result of Jose Dollum's career. But the playboy lifestyle meant that whilst Dollum would race full-time one year, the next he would only race in a handful of races whilst enjoying skiing and drinks in the bar. During 1974, he'd only do a few F2 races, but did take a podium for Surtees at the Salzburg Ring. He didn't finish at Le Mans in a Matra, but more importantly, he did make his debut in Formula 1. Sadly, his appearance in a Formula 1 race was to be a tragic one, albeit four years before his brother debuted. Jose Dolan was signed to race for Bang & Olufsen sponsored Team Surtees, racing in a few European Formula 2 races as mentioned, and also making three attempts at Formula 1. As mentioned in the Dita Cuesta video, Surtees went through a number of drivers in 1974, and Jose Dolum happened to be one of them. His first attempt was at his home Grand Prix at Dijon. Dolum failed to qualify by less than a second, with compatriot Francois Miguel taking the final spot on the grid. His next attempt was in Italy. This time he missed out by even less time. Migault and Henri Pescarolo beat him out by just two tenths of a second. He finally got to start a race at Watkins Glen. He again failed to qualify but matched the time of Vittorio Brambilla in a march, so was allowed to start in the final place on the grid. His race was uneventful, but teammate Helmut Koenig would crash on lap 9 and was sadly killed in a horrifying accident caused either by suspension failure or a deflating rear tyre. I've seen reports of both. Dolan raced on until lap 25 when the team decided to withdraw him from the race. Dolan's F1 career came to an end through no fault of his own. And in Helmut Koenig, the young Austrian had been marked as a youngster with a lot of potential for the future. He was just 25 when he died. Jose Dolum was to suffer another setback in 1975. He broke his neck while skiing and did very little racing. He raced at Le Mans in 1976 for the Renault team, but his Alpine A442 retired. He also took part in eight Formula 2 races for Fred Opert Racing, but scored no points and never finished a race higher than ninth. In 1977, he took part in only one race, a Formula 2 race at Ruin for the Willy Carlson team. This would be the first time he would share the track with Didier Peroni. Whilst Dollum failed to finish, Peroni got a podium in third. In 1978, Dollum again struggled for results in Formula 2, but had his best result at Le Mans with a fourth place for the works Renault team, alongside Jean-Pierre Jabouet, Jean Ragnotti and Guy Frecklin. The other Renault car was driven by Jean-Pierre Jossard, 
and Didier Peroni, and it won the famous race. Peroni had also started his Formula 1 career with Tyrrell and did what his brother didn't. In his second race at Brazil, he scored a point. His far too short career would see three wins with Ligier and Ferrari, and a famous rivalry with Gilles Villeneuve. Meanwhile, Jose Dolem's career was coming to an end. In 1979, he had his final European Formula 2 race for AGS at Silverstone, where he would finish 14th. In 29 Formula 2 races, he scored points twice. After his career went south, Jose Dolem turned to powerboat racing. After Peroni had a horrible accident in 1982, he would spend a long time recovering from his injuries. In 1986, he could walk unaided and also turned to powerboat racing starting his own team, Calibri. In 1987, Didier Peroni was killed in a powerboat race in the Isle of Wight. Jose Dolan would take over the running of the team and continued the season with a new crew in honour of his brother. Sadly, in 1988, Jose Dolan would fly a Mitsubishi MU2 Marquise with five passengers from Rouen to Montpellier. For reasons unknown, the plane ran into trouble and crashed into a field, killing all six people on board. Jose Dolem died less than a year after his half-brother and was buried in the same plot. So that was the career of Jose Dolem. It's clear that racing was not his main focus in life. He could have done more, but other things obviously took priority. And that's alright. He may never have matched his brother, but he got to compete at Le Mans and even had a podium in European Formula 2. And, oh yeah, he was even a Formula 1 one-race wonder. It's a shame there is so much tragedy attached to his tale, from the death of Helmut Koenig in 1974, his own broken neck in 1975, Peroni's injuries in 1982 and death in 1987, to Dolem's own demise in 1988. There are careers that have gone a lot more smoothly, to say the least. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel, make sure you subscribe and a mega thank you to everyone who has recently. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be back with more One Race Wonders soon. I'm pretty sure I have not pronounced Jose Dolem's name right once this whole video. So thanks once again and have a good one.